What's up guys, this is Mike from Terrestrial Imaging. In this video, we'll talk about the key similarities and differences between the DJI Matrice 300 and the DJI Matrice 30 series. On my right, I have the Matrice 300 RTK, and then on my left, I have the Matrice 30T and the Matrice 30. For simplicity, for the rest of the video, I'll refer to this one as the M300, the M30T, and the M30. The first thing I want to address is the difference between the M30T and the M30. So they're exactly the same except for the fact that the M30T has a thermal imaging sensor, whereas the M30 does not. So because they're the same except for that one sensor, I'm going to put the M30 to the side and really just focus on these two aircraft right here. The M30 series is the newest in DJI's enterprise lineup and has only been out for a few months, whereas the M300 has been out for a while now, since 2020. Your first thought may be that newer is better, but that's not the case here. The M30 series was not designed to replace the M300, but to be a really nice, compact, portable option for the commercial user. One of the biggest differences and most obvious differences between the two platforms is the size. So the M30 series is designed to be compact and portable. It comes in a really nice small case, and the charging case that comes with it is also really small. To deploy the M30, all you have to do is remove it from that case, install the batteries, turn on the controller, and you're up in the air. Whereas the M300 comes in a much larger case, requires a little bit more setup, such as installing the legs and the payload, or payloads if you have multiple, and then the charging case is much larger as well. So this will take up more space in your vehicle and require a little bit more time to deploy, whereas the M30 will take up much less space and will be a quick deploy drone. Since I talked about charging cases, I do want to point out a difference between the two and a new feature with the BS30 charging case for the M30 series. So with this new charging case, you now have the option to put your batteries into storage mode and you have a rapid charging option. So for public safety, this can be a really beneficial feature. For others, you may not need it as you have the privilege of planning your flights and scheduling everything ahead of time. Now, if you do have that privilege to plan your flights ahead of time, you probably don't want to use that quick charging feature too much as over time it can deteriorate your batteries a little bit faster. Now for the biggest difference between the two aircraft, which will probably sway your purchasing decision in one way or another, and that is the cameras and payload options. So the M30 series, they come with a fixed gimbal and payload that can't be interchanged or swapped out. Whereas the M300 series, you have many different payload options and can even mount up to three payloads at the same time. So for example, we have the H20T on here, and this is the equivalent camera to the one on the M30T, where you have a thermal imaging sensor, a zoom sensor, a wide angle camera, and a laser rangefinder. Now on the M300, you can now complement that with a gimbalized spotlight or speaker, or you could just have another payload such as a LiDAR scanner, a multi-spectral imaging camera, and so much more. So with that said, the M300 becomes a little bit more versatile than the M30 series as you have so many different payload options that you're not tied to. Whereas the M30 series, once you pick the 30 or the 30T, that's the payload you have and it cannot be swapped out. Now let's talk about flight time. So the M300 with the H20T, which is the equivalent to the camera on the M30T, can fly for 43 minutes. Now the M30 series can fly for 41 minutes. So really, they're pretty much the same in that regard. Now let's talk about the controllers. You'll see right away, they're two very different controllers. Now these are just the ones that come in the base packages. So the M30 series was released with the new DJI RC Plus, which is a huge improvement from the DJI Smart Controller Enterprise that comes with the M300. Now in a future update, the RC Plus will be compatible with the M300, but it'll be sold separately. So the RC Plus features a much larger screen, much more customizable buttons, and a much longer battery life. Whereas the Smart Controller Enterprise has a smaller screen, a lower battery life, 
and only a few customizable buttons. With the M30 series and the new RC Plus also came the new DJI Pilot 2 app. These are now the same apps used to control both aircraft and both aircraft will now be compatible with DJI's Flight Hub 2. Another similarity between the two platforms is that they're both RTK capable, which also means they could connect to DJI's DRTK2 mobile station. Now with the M300 though, you might have a lot more success with 2D and 3D modeling because of the higher resolution payloads that are available for this aircraft. With all that said, what it really comes down to is which cameras you need, and that'll ultimately determine which aircraft that you need. So if you've decided that the camera on the M30T is all that you need, this might be the better platform for you because it's a little bit more portable. Whereas the M300 will be your go-to platform if you need multiple payload options or something that the M30T doesn't offer. That's it guys, those are the key similarities and differences between the M300 and the M30 series. If you're interested in either one of these platforms, give us a call or visit us online at terrestrialimaging.com.